Hello and welcome to the news on NTA International. My name is Frama Panyi and reading with me tonight is Shagun Ajayi as the sign language interpreter. We begin with the headlines. First Council of State meeting under President Bola Tinubu addresses State of the Nation. Nigeria and five Nordic countries advancing discussions on expansion of trade and diplomatic relations. UN chief advocates permanent seat for Africa on UN Security Council as part of reforms to correct historical injustices. And now the news in details. The first Council of State meeting under President Bola Tinubu has just ended at the State House. Former Presidents Muhammad Buhari and Goodluck Jonathan were in the Council Chamber for the meeting, while former Heads of State Yakubu Gawan and General Abdul Salami Abubakar are joined online. State Governors or their representatives also attended the meeting. Details in our subsequent bulletin. And still from the State House, President Tinubu will tomorrow, Wednesday, depart Abuja for Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, on a three-day official visit to honor the invitation of President Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo. A statement by the Presidential Advisor on Media and Publicity, Ajuri Ingalali, indicates that President Tinubu will meet with Equatorial Guinean President at the Presidential Villa on arrival. The meetings will be held between the two leaders and agreements particularly on oil and gas and security, signed. The president will be accompanied on the trip by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Tugar, and other members of his cabinet who will be involved in the signing of agreements and review of opportunities to improve bilateral relations. And Nigeria and five Nordic countries are advancing discussions on expansion of trade and diplomatic relations Minister of Foreign Affairs Yusuf Tugar, who hosted his counterparts from the five countries, said technology transfer, particularly in CNG and renewable energy, was top on the agenda. Kelvin Ibonoaye reports. Nigeria already has a robust relations with individual countries of the Nordic region. Uh, but collective ability. aspirations as a we bloc to align with that of Nigeria in the area of trade, human rights and democracy is what this meeting is about. Why the head of the delegation and Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Tobias Bistrom, praised President Bola Tinubu's leadership role in ECOWAS to advance democracy, he reaffirmed the Nordic region's support for his slot for Africa in the United Nations Security Council, a disposition Minister of Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Toga, was excited about. Nigeria and the Nordics are key partners in an array of areas, not only global and regional security, but also trade and investment promoting human rights and democracy, as well as combating climate change. They have what you refer to as a cyclical economy, where nothing goes to waste. So all this talk about renewable uh, technology, they're very advanced when it comes to that. We're also looking to partner with them on that. We have uh, NASENI, for instance, National Agency for Science, Engineering and Infrastructure. They're doing a lot with solar, with even the CNG that we're talking about. Trade volume between Nigeria and the five Nordic countries of Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland and Norway stood at $4.3 billion in 2022 and expected to scale up to around $6 billion in 2025. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewe NTA News. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has called for Africa to be given a permanent seat on the UN Security Council as part of reforms to correct historical injustices. Charles Alpha has details. The Security Council, made up of five permanent members, which are China, France, Russia, the UK and US, has long been criticized for representing the realities that prevailed at the end of World War II, when much of Africa was still under colonial rule prompting Guterres to say the world has changed since 1945. However, the composition of the Council, despite a few changes, has not kept pace. There is no permanent member representing Africa in the Security Council. 
and the number of elected members from the continent is not in proportion to its importance. We cannot accept that the world's preeminent peace and security body lacks a permanent voice for the 10 non-permanent members of the body are allocated by region, but unlike the five permanent members, they do not have the power of veto. The African Union has long been pushing for the continent to have two permanent representatives on the Council and an additional two seats as non-permanent representatives. The debate on Monday was convened by Sierra Leone and its president, Julius Mardabu, who made a case for the continent, saying the time for half measures and incremental progress is over, maintaining Africa must be heard and its demands for justice and equity must be met. This systemic bias perpetrates a circle of marginalization and reinforces the false notion of Africa as a passive actor in shaping global affairs. The UN Security Council has significant responsibilities, including authorizing peacekeeping operations, imposing international sanctions, and determining how the UN should respond to conflicts around the world. Other UN officials echoed the sentiments for reform. They agreed that the world's preeminent peace and security body lacking a permanent voice for a continent of well over a billion people is unacceptable. Guterres said the body had failed to adequately align African representation with the continent's efforts and contributions. Only four African nations, Egypt, Liberia, Ethiopia, and South Africa were among the founding members. Charles Alva, NTA News. And talking health now, the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Africa CDC has declared MPOX as public health emergency of continental security. Uchi Okuchoko reports that the declaration was made during an online media briefing. MPOX, formerly called monkeypox, is a highly infectious disease which scientists from the Africa cases, Centers for Disease Control uh, and Prevention have been alarmed by the speed uh, at which at, uh, a new strand is spreading. So Starting from the Democratic Republic of Congo, the virus, which can cause lesions across the whole body, has spread to other African countries. In the next two weeks, Africa CDC, working together with all partners, in one coordination mechanism that we decided to put in place, we will be able to finalize a joint response plan coming from all national country plans that will be submitted to the emergency committee, uh, uh, to the, uh, uh, the ECG for review. The declaration of a public health emergency by the Africa CDC will help governments coordinate their response and potentially increase the flow of medical supplies and aid into affected areas. It will also enable health leaders outside Africa to be monitoring the situation to assess the risk of the outbreak spreading further. What this means to Nigeria is that we have to uh, raise our level of alertness and at the same time develop our efforts at curtailing the impact you know of this disease in short to mitigate the impact of the outbreak even if it occurs here now but since no case or very few cases have been seen here everything must be done to prevent new cases from coming into the country Mpox spreads from animals to humans and between people through close contacts with someone who is infected, including through sex, skin-to-skin -skin contacts, and talking or breathing close to another person. It can cause symptoms such as fever, muscle aches, and lesions across the body, and if left untreated, can be deadly. There are two main strains of the virus known to exist, the murder one that caused the global outbreak in 2022 and more deadly strain endemic in Central Africa, which is behind the new recently discovered variant in DR Congo. There are three vaccines that exist, but only people at risk or who have been in close contact with an infected person are usually able to have it. Uchi Uguchu, NTA News.
Mine unions have described the unlocking of Concola and Mopani copper mines as a success in the last three years. National Union of Miners and, and Allied Workers President Sol Simujika said the resolving of the challenges in the mining sector will attract investment. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges of President Haga in the Ishilema's administration since they formed the government was bringing sanity to Zambia's mining sector. And the two giant mines on the copper belt, KCM and Mopani, served as a clear example of a faulty mining policy which saw the two mines struggling to operate, putting the workers at risk of unemployment with no hope for the future. KCM was going under, uh, uh, contractors demobilized, uh, workers lost, lost jobs. Uh, contractors and suppliers were never paid. It has been three years of the UPND in power, but how does the labor movement rate their performance? The performance of the UPND government, the New Dawn government, in the past three years, specifically in the mining sector, uh, is some, something that you are able to point at. The mine unions think there is significant improvement in Zambia's mining sector, citing developments at Mopani and KCM and investments in northwestern province, which means more jobs for the locals. We, we know that KCM is going to bring in some jobs. We know Mopani mentioned more than 2,000 workers to come in. We have uh, news that in, in, in Rwanda about more than 3,000 workers. So, so generally... So, so a lot of jobs actually are coming in because of this, uh, the activities in the mining industry. If history is anything to go by, the New Dawn government will be remembered for successfully resolving one of the most difficult mining sagas at Kisia. Interracial storms lashing on South Asia have killed hundreds of people since June. Official data on Tuesday showed flooding and landslides accounted for widespread devastation during the fierce monsoon season. Charles Alpha reports. Reports say weather-related disasters are common during the monsoon season, which is from June to September. But experts say climate change is increasing their frequency and severity. Data have shown that the deaths include at least 250 in India, 171 in Nepal, and 178 in Pakistan. According to government weather experts, ferocious rainstorms have triggered widespread flooding and landslides. The crushing heat wave in May and June saw temperatures in New Delhi match the capital's previous record high of 49 Point two Celsius. On Tuesday, rescue teams searched for both missing persons after nine drowned when a surge of water smashed through the Una district of Himachal Pradesh state with at least 25 people injured. Following a 5.5 magnitude earthquake that occurred 28 kilometers away from the central Syrian city of Hama on Monday evening, Hama's health director Hama Yunis said residents were stranded on the streets after fleeing their homes out of fear. Monitoring stations registered four week aftershocks following various degrees of tremors. Charles Alpha, NTN News. Now a 10-year action plan that will bring an end to the depletion in the number of elephants in Nigerian reserves has been launched in Abuja with the European Union and major development partners pledging support for implementation. Once more, let's hear from Charles Alpha. One of the world's most majestic mammals, elephants, face extinction because of the activities of poachers who are constantly engaging in killing and trading their ivories. In Nigeria, the 10-year action plan from 2024 to 2034 revealed that the remaining 10% of both forest and savanna elephants left in the north and southern parts of Nigeria will disappear in less than 10 years if critical players only stand and watch from a distance without concrete steps taken. To put measures in place for an effective end to poaching and conserve Nigeria's efforts to collectively protect the few elephants left in both Yankari and Cross River State Reserves. We also have uh, a new or forthcoming program to support forest and biodiversity. Um, these projects are vital to the protection of Nigerian forest elephants. The federal government of Nigeria 
is very conscious of this emergency and is thus not leaving any stone unturned in halting and reversing the ugly situation. The 10-year plan is not merely a document. It is a testament to our commitment to preserving one of the most majestic and culturally significant species that grace our land. The launch of this document reaffirms Nigeria's commitment to a sustainable future where humans and wildlife coexist harmoniously. Charles Alpha, NTA News. And you're still watching the news on NTA International. It's time to take a short break on news when we return. Please stay with us. Glad to know you're still there. Now, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has signed performance bonds with heads of agencies and purse titles under his ministry, urging them to work towards sustaining the temple and communicating the policies of the Renewed Hope Agenda. This was at a retreat for ministries, directors, heads of his agencies and purse titles in Abuja. Salih Gwanara reports. On the streets of Abuja, the voices of these Nigerians are becoming louder on what they describe as a paradigm shift in information management. What drives any government in Africa is propaganda. The people are getting more enlightened and I think they are really coming out to tell people what the government is doing. It's absolutely fantastic. I have nothing to fault the minister for. I have nothing. Honestly, in terms of information management, I don't have any fault for it. He has not defaulted in any way. These submissions from the public and the signing of the performance bond at this sectoral retreat on presidential priorities and ministerial deliverables are a boost to enable the ministry to sustain its transformation in terms of information dissemination. Transparency plays a crucial role in fostering and reinforcing that trust. I want to use this opportunity to remind us all that as a Minister of Information, we must understand the efforts that the government is putting into a new home as it has promised in the area of improved minimum wage, student loans, consumer credit, loans to big and small businesses, as well as different support grants. The government is also not resting on its oars regarding infrastructure and social projects around the country. The Renewed Hope Agenda is a beacon of progress and transformation, and it is incumbent on us to ensure that we effectively communicate its objectives and achievements to the Nigerian people. The agencies assures that through their delivery task team, the ministry will remain top in propagating the policies of a renewed hope. To make sure that we sustain public confidence in government, and also disseminate information that will reach to the grassroots so that the government will be able to know exactly what the government is doing vis-a-vis -vis, also transmit the views and also public opinions to the government. All of us um, DGs, CEOs, we're going to take this information, extrapolate it down to our different directorates and we're all going to be laser focused on carrying out the deliverables that have been placed before us. There were presentations by resource persons, including the coordinator, Central Resort Delivery and Coordinating Unit. In Abuja, Saliu Gwanara, NTA News. And President Bola Tinubu assents to the Judicial Office Holder Salaries and Allowances Bill, which increases emoluments of judicial officers at the federal and state levels by 300%. In a statement, the Special Advisor to the President of National Assembly Matters Senate, Senator Bashir Lado, says the signing underscores President Tinubu's prioritization of welfare of Nigerian workers, just as he recently assents the new national minimum wage of 70,000 Naira. Senator Lado says the newly prescribed salaries and allowances for judicial officers reflects current economic realities, adding that the prompt signing of the salary bills demonstrates dedication of President Tinubu to ensure that every salary earner in Nigeria, especially those serving vital and strategic roles, receive the recognition and compensation they deserve. He commends the leadership and members of the 10th National Assembly for their commitment to improve welfare of Nigerians and urges 
judicial officers to redouble efforts in ensuring speedy dispensation of justice for Nigerians. And Didi Esther Wilson Jack has taken over from Dr. Folashade Yemiesong as a new head of the Civil Service of Federation. While taking over, Didi Esther Wilson Jack thanked God Almighty for taking her to the pinnacle of her career and appreciated President Bola Tinubu for the trust and confidence reposed in her to serve the nation, promising to honor the achievements of her predecessors by continuing and fast-tracking ongoing reform initiatives in the service. She reiterated the maximum use of technology in driving transformation in the service and promised to maintain, enforce and deploy the core principles of the service, namely accountability, meritocracy, professionalism, loyalty and efficiency in all her dealings. The immediate past head of service, Dr. Yemiason, prayed God to sustain her successor and give her the necessary strength and wisdom to excel in the overall interests of the service and Nigeria in general. Now, the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory has extended the order restricting participants in the nationwide protest to the MKO Abiola Stadium, also known as National Stadium. Justice Silvano Origi gave the order following an application to that effect argued by Ogu James Onoja, SAN, on behalf of the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. At the Tuesday's proceedings, none of the 11 defendants was in court and were not represented by any legal practitioner. However, the FCT minister, through his lawyer, drew the attention of the judge to a statement issued by one Damilari Adenola, where she threatened that the nationwide protest may be extended beyond the initial 10 days. Onoja, SAN, argued since they were not in court and no one knows their next plan of action, it will be in order to extend the order to ensure that the peace of the FCT was not unjustly disrupted. In a brief ruling, the judge granted the request and affirmed that the order of July 31 remained valid and in force. The court subsequently fixed August 22 for hearing of the motion on notice. And up next... Sports update. Team Nigeria Para Athletes for the 2024 Paralympic Games have departed the country for a returning tour in Germany ahead of the commencement of the Paralympic Games. The Paralympians will participate in badminton, business, and para powerlifting. President of the Paralympic Committee of Nigeria, Sunday Odebode, charged the athletes to make the country proud by winning medals. Nigeria got 10 medals at the last Paralympic Games in Tokyo, Japan in 2020. The Paralympic Games will commence from August 28 to September 8, 2024. To grassroots football development, after about two weeks intensive training, the Youth Arise Football Academy Summer Camp ended its Lagos program at the Obele Mini Stadium, Suwulewe, Lagos, with about 100 young players between the ages of 4 and 19 participating. The grassroots program, which will now be based in Lagos, having been to Jaws and Abuja, hopes to develop players who can combine football and education with the vision of creating a pathway to making them professional players in the future. Novelty matches were played in the under 10, under 13, under 15 and under 19. And ladies, in memory of late Olai Uwala Olagbe Miro, who was a former Green Eagles player and a former technical director of the Nigerian Football Federation. We are structured for development because without development, the players cannot be valuable. So in the summer camp, really, a lot of boys developed. They started to play proper football. Their strength increased, their stamina increased and the participation level. In combat sports, Season 2 of the Yucateco Boxing League commenced in Lagos with interesting bouts in week 1 of the league. 12 boxing clubs are featuring in Season 2 with about 312 boxers competing in 572 bouts for the season. Season 2 will see the league go to 12 states across the federation, showcasing male and female boxers in 13 weight categories as they compete for the ultimate prize. What we have done in Season 1 is, and what has happened in Paris has actually shown that this is just the right way to go. This is the kind of thing that we need. To make sure we change the rhythm. In the first fight, Taiwa Debai of AGB Boxing Club beat Samuel Danusi of Ogbab Family Boxing Club in the 51 kilogram category. The sports update gifts George and TN News. And now let's take a quick look at the weather prospects for Wednesday in Nigeria and other parts of the globe.
That concludes the news on NT International. Thank you for being a part of it. My name is Frama Pani and Shagun Ajayi has been the sign language interpreter.